the laboratory, we're not huge fans of the H and H impression technique. We've mentioned it before uh, in the case of the week, and you know some dentists will tell us that they're doing it and ask for extra coats of dye spacer. Uh, today, that means extra coats of digital dye spacer, where we'll add some extra spacer. But a lot of dentists will do the technique and not say that, and we end up with crowns uh, that are too tight and they won't go down all the way. And we also have uh, occlusal issues, uh, like what we'll see on, on this case. Um, my biggest issue with the technique is that it's a, a technique that's really centered around not wanting to pack cord. And so, you know, we come up with this technique. It's a two-step technique to drive the wash material subgingival so that we don't have to pack cord and um, but it carries some liabilities with it and, and as a result um, we have restoration sometimes that don't fit and complicate things in the lab all in the name of not packing cord and there's kind of got to be a better way so this impression I want to show you is really not H and H so I don't want the H and H people to get angry at me because I know this is not the way that it's supposed to be done Th this looks more like um, uh, H and H and H. You know, there's three layers here. So this would be the triple H. I believe that was a wrestler. Uh, it's also a, a band from Vancouver, Hot Hot Heat, that I, I happen to like a lot. Um, so this could be, I guess, the triple H because there's the original green material that was relieved and then relined with the red material. And then when that wouldn't work out, it was relined, I guess, again, a third time with the uh, purple material. And one of the signs that you can tell that this was done uh, in two phases. You can always see that the materials will separate from each other rather rather easily. And if this was done as a simultaneous impression, um, these two materials will always stick together. They will not be able to be pulled apart like this. So in other words, when you syringe uh, material around the tooth and your assistant's putting material in the tray and then you seat the tray material onto the syringe material and they set simultaneously, they will not peel uh, apart like this and that's the technique that I use and we like uh, as a laboratory but when you go in and you just see this purple material now is here on the prep and here on the prep and then the rest of the teeth are just covered in the red there's got to be a difference in the level in the vertical height between these two teeth and the rest of these that are in the red and that's one of the issues that we have with the H&H &H technique is that some of the teeth are being represented by uh, one impression material. Now we've got a different level of impression material. Sometimes we'll see the purple. It's not always purple, but in, you know, we'll see it on the prep teeth and then a couple adjacent teeth and then it won't continue over. And we get a step, if you will, on the stone model uh, where all of a sudden um, we have a drop off here. So we've got one uh, set of teeth occluding at one level and then the prep teeth occluding at another level. And that's where we run into occlusal issues. And that doesn't even take into uh, consideration the fact that um, we have some compression of the material and a tight fit that needs some extra uh, die spacer. And so when you look at a model that's been poured up, um, you can see things. As you look at this, you can see extra material over here. And this is represented by where the purple material stops and we have the green material. So you can very clearly see where those two areas come together. Now, obviously that's not in an area that's of consequence here. But when you have an area where the material stops and it happens to be on an occlusal surface of a tooth, that's problematic. And you can see other areas where that's happening around here where material stops and another one starts uh, along this area. So this is, you know, one, two, three teeth in front of the preps uh, as you look uh, here on that lateral incisor. And if we look back at the impression again, and you can see on that lateral, that's where the green is and there's no red material in that area. You can see there's a red material on both sides of it, but not on that lateral incisor. And so as that happens, as we move around and look, there's uh, discrepancies on the occlusal surfaces uh, of the teeth as well. And so this is one of the reasons why taking uh, these two, uh, these different layered uh, impressions, these bilayered impressions is difficult. In dental school, when we took these uh, these two-step impressions, we would take the initial impression, and we usually did it with a, a separating medium, like a piece of saran wrap or a piece of plastic that we put over the teeth and took it. But regardless, when we were done, we took a watermelon burr and we hollowed all of it out. We took everything out of there, and then we filled it with material and syringed a little around the tooth, and that all set at the same time. So basically, the putty material, 
was acting as a matrix almost, but we hollowed out all the evidence of the teeth from the inside with a watermelon burr and then picked up all the tooth structure with that impression that we took at the end. And the H&H &H technique, all you do, you, you don't hollow anything out. You take an impression, essentially, and then you put more wash material where the prep is and have the patient bite back together again. And so you've got one uh, preparation being represented by this material while the rest has been impressed uh, by the other, and they're setting at different times. And that's really where we kind of run into those issues. And that's why um, I understand why dentists want to do things without uh, a retraction cord. And that's why we continue to look at other alternatives. Certainly a diode laser is a great way to get around uh, from having to use a retraction cord in the posterior. We're currently evaluating uh, um, an instrument from Dentsply, the Aquacil Cordless. And I'm getting some good impressions with that, not having to use an impression cord. Essentially, when you look at that, that's basically a, a, an impression syringe tip that's about the size of a perioprobe like this. Um, it's plastic, but it's about the size of a perioprobe, but it's got an opening on the end where the impression material comes out. Now, as you might imagine, if you tried to squeeze with a gun and squirt impression wash material out the end of this, it'd be almost impossible uh, to do, and that's why it actually hooks up to your handpiece coupler and you step on the rheostat and it's air activated. So the air activates the motor which pushes the impression material out of this. And so what you're able to do with the Aquasil cordless is take this like it were a perioprobe and actually put it into the sulcus and step on the rheostat and start it and then move it around in the sulcus like it was a perioprobe and you're squirting impression material into the sulcus without putting a cord in there. And then you move to the next tooth if you're doing two and put it into the sulcus and move it around the tooth like that while your assistant fills the tray, put the tray in place. So uh, a novel idea and an interesting way to be able to do it in a cordless. And you'll see, uh, we'll release uh, a video on that and certainly you'll see it on Chairside Live as well. Uh, diode laser, very easy to go in and trough the tissue around a posterior tooth. I don't like doing it on anterior teeth because anytime I use a diode laser, and it just has to do with the, the width of the tip, but I always lose a little vertical height on the tissue and I don't want to expose a margin like this on an anterior tooth. Uh, back here on a molar, not a big deal. On a central incisor to expose a margin like this, that is going to be a big deal. Aesthetically, we don't want the patient to be able to see where the tooth uh, and the crown come together. So uh, doing things like diode lasers and this Aquasil cordless, there are ways to get away from uh, packing cord all the time. I do still pack cord in the anterior uh, and honestly a lot of times in the posterior too. Um, because it's part of my prep technique and my assistance in RDA EF, extended functions. And here in California, she can pack cord. In fact, she can do a whole heck of a lot more than that. She can take the whole impression on her own, even cement the crown on her own as well. So I understand wanting to get away from the laborious, time-consuming uh, cord packing, but not at the expense of throwing off the fit, of having crowns that fit too tight and throwing off the occlusion uh, of those restorations at the same time. There's got to be a better way to get around that issue than that.